folks and today we discuss an early pregnancy topic how to calculate the expected date of delivery you see here um, uh, a person I'd like to introduce to you or not a person um, an animal it's uh, Jimmy our 11 year old Maltese he is my he's our best friend and you could argue our Zen master and he is very supportive of the Roga as you can see um, the overview of the calculation of the expected date of delivery. Why is this an essential topic to understand, to master? First, I will give you some background, briefly discussing the female cycle as far as relevant to the calculation of the due date. Then, how to calculate the expected date of delivery. One can do it firstly by heart, by applying the so-called Nagler's rule. We could do it mechanically by using the so-called pregnancy wheel or electronically by using um, the World Wide Web or an app. When to use the ultrasound scan to date a pregnancy and when should we adjust the calculation if we have an early ultrasound scan. First I would like to clarify the jargon. Quite often we refer to the expected date of delivery as the due date, the expected due date, also abbreviation EDD, or the expected date of delivery, or the expected date on confinement. So more than enough jargon to choose from and also possibly resulting in confusion. A personal thing, if you would mention expected date of delivery or date of delivery, that is probably clear for everybody, including our pregnant ladies. Um, why is this topic very, very important to understand? When you know the gestational age and the due date, that will determine many things in pregnancy. Firstly, for instance, at a certain gestational age, is the baby small or growth restricted or not? Is this pregnancy preterm or not? Viable or not, for instance, is the pregnancy 22 or 26 weeks? That makes a big difference in the management. Do I need to transfer the patient from a country hospital to a city hospital or not? Do I need to give the mother steroids before the delivery or the cesarean section or not? Is, do, are we dealing with preeclampsia after 37 weeks? Then in general, based on the Hippitat 1 trial, we would tend to induce labor. And last but not least, is the pregnancy post-dates or not? In other words, if the pregnancy is post-dates, the baby is more at risk and we tend to induce labor. So a few examples where it's clear, without knowing the due date, without knowing the gestational age, actually you're in the dark as far as the management is concerned. Last but not least, knowing to how to calculate the due date will ensure that you will be able to pass your OSCE exam with flying colors. I have seen students nailing this OSCE because they knew a few questions, the relevant questions asked and the other way around. The gestational age is calculated from the first day of the last menstrual period and we assume that we're dealing with a lady with a regular 28 day cycle. Mrs. Regular or maybe you could also refer to her as Mrs. Boring. The last menstrual period is exactly two weeks before the ovulation and the fertilization. By the way, uh, we need to realize that sperm can survive in the female genital tract for about five days if the circumstances are ideal. Uh, so when the pre ovulatory mucus is very thin and watery. I would like you to uh, have a look at the Daroga video the female cycle and, and the chronology. So most women, by the way, know the first day of the last menstrual period, unlike the day of ovulation or conception. Let's go back to the female cycle. The length of the female menstrual cycle and ovulation. Here in the top panel we see depicted a regular 28-day cycle. The follicular phase, the first half of the cycle, is 14 days. In the middle we have ovulation and fertilization and the second half of the cycle would be 14 days. By the way, if pregnancy occurs, the period will be missed 
and the progesterone production continues. Here is the first day of the last menstrual period, the LMP, and this is the situation if a lady has a regular 28 day cycle. If, however, a lady would have a 35 day cycle, it's important to realize that the length of the, uh, the follicular phase is increased by um, seven days. So the follicular phase in this situation is 21 days compared to 14 days in the lady with a 28 day cycle. So the first day of the last menstrual period occurs here, so that means the fertilization takes place here. This will have consequences for calculating the due date in case of a longer than 28 day cycle, as we'll discuss later on. So what we do realize, we obstetricians and midwives, this is a collective little lie. We calculate the pregnancy duration from the last winter period, while in fact the pregnancy, the duration of the pregnancy, is usually 14 days less. This is for practical reasons, so please forgive us. In fact, one could argue that the gestational age is actually the menstrual age. Calculation of the due date. First, we need to know three questions. Is the first day of the last menstrual period known? Is the menstrual cycle regular? And is the length of the menstrual cycle 28 days? Three essential questions. If one, two and three are known and confirmed, then we can use either Nagel's rule or the pregnancy wheel or electronic due date calculator. Let me, few, let me focus on Nagel. Franz Karl Nagel was a German uh, obstetrician uh, and he lived a few years ago, as you can see. He published in 1830 Leerbuch der Geburtshilfe, which is the, the, the textbook of obstetrics. Um, and he calculated the average day of the average duration of the pregnancy was 280 days. Interesting, just in 1990, a study was confirmed in, um, was performed in Sweden, including 427,000 singleton birth in Sweden, where the duration of the pregnancy was very well known. And they calculated the average estimated due date to be 281 days. So it's amazing that Nagel already in 1813 came up with the average duration of 280 days whilst he had no ultrasound to his disposition. What is Nagel's rules? The rule is match for obstetricians, so it's not too hard. One can calculate the expected date of delivery by commencing with the first day of the last menstrual period, then adding seven days, subtracting three months and adding one year. Another way to say it could be add seven days and seven and nine months. This, calc this is based on the duration of 280 days after the last menstrual period. For instance, if the last menstrual period was on the 1st of April 2015, the expected date of delivery would be at seven days, that means the 8th of April, subtract three months, uh, April is four, minus three is one, so the due date is the 8th of January at one year 2016. This rule of Nagel does not account for the length of the month of less than 31 days and leap years. So it's not perfectly accurate, but it does a good job in daily practice and still works. The second option is using the pregnancy wheel. Here we see a frequently used wheel in South Australia. I put the arrow on the 1st of April, the arrow of the first day of the last menstrual period. And when you look at the other part where the arrow is, it tells me that the due date in this example uh, is also to be found. Then we move to the third EDD calculator on the web. Here is one example which are found on the webpage of essentialbaby.com.au. The first day of the last menstrual period is the 1st of April 2015. This calculator is quite smart and asks as well what the duration of the menstrual cycle is, 28 days, 
click on find out and here's the answer. The due date here is Wednesday the 6th of January 2016. The conception date is given, the commencement of the second trimester is given and the third trimester is given. So a little bit of, um, even a little bit more of an advanced calculator. The same type of calculators are available as an app and um, yeah, most of us have that available. So calculating the due date, if one and two are known and confirmed, but now the scenario that the length of the regular menstrual cycle is 32 days, how do we calculate the due date? If you realize my, my slide on the longer cycle, it means the factual ovulation took on average four days later place compared to the, the last menstrual period and as well the, um, the fertilization. So we can use the Nagler rule, we can use the due date calculator, the wheel, but we have to add seven day, uh, four days in total because the ovulation took four days later place compared to a 28 day cycle. The other way around, if a lady would have a cycle length of only 26 days, the last menstrual period is known, the cycle is regular, we would subtract two days compared from the Nagel rule and from the pregnancy wheel. Now, the scenario if the last menstrual period is unknown and the cycle is irregular, how would we calculate the due date? In principle, we would request an ultrasound scan. The ultrasound scan will answer this question more reliable than clinical examination or measuring the fundal height. We would only use that in circumstances where an ultrasound scan is not available. So we must assume that the first measurement of the ultrasound scan, measuring the embryo or the fetus, that that measurement in principle is on the 50th percentile. Of note is that when we measure, when we are able to measure the chrome lamp length between 7 and 14 weeks, that we can very reliably calculate the due date, and even more so when the gestation age is between 7 and 10 weeks. Here we see a diagram <clears throat> as we have discussed in the video early pregnancy normal. Here we see the crown to rump length depicted, and this is as we can visualize the crown rump length uh, in uh, a grayscale transvaginal ultrasound scan. Here we see the amniotic sac, beautifully depicted the baby's head, the baby's trunk. So we measure the baby from head to bottom, and that's called the crown rump length. Why is the crown rump length so reliable in predicting the gestational age? First, fetuses from different ethnicity have the same size, so the potential to grow is still not coming to fruition. Firstly, and secondly, we can see here where the crown rump length is depicted on the y axis and the gestational age on the horizontal axis. We can see in particular here how quickly the crown rump length uh, increases in size, in length. So, for instance, between the gestational age of 10 and 12 weeks. Um, the crown rump length increases from maybe 30 millimeters to um, 56 millimeters. So a very clear difference. So one week makes a big difference. Hence, crown rump length is ideal to calculate gestational age. When we look at um, this is a, a Gaussian distribution, a standard variation, um, and here we see the mean gestational age is 280 days. Then the dark blue areas depict plus or minus one of the standard deviation. 90% of the babies will be born in this area, so within three weeks of their expected date of delivery. 21% of the babies will be born within three days of their expected date of delivery, and only 4% will exactly deliver on the due date. Important to know because um, when we're dealing with the due date 
it's like the goalposts are shifting forward or backward and it's quite difficult to comprehend for modern women who are used to um, be in control of their life and uh, know exactly what's happening. So this is mother nature at work and this is a well-known uncertainty where um, obstetricians and midwives are familiar with but especially a first-time pregnant lady who might be struggling with this concept. Let's focus a little bit more on the ultrasound scan based calculation of the due date. Between 7 to 10 weeks of gestation, the CRL is the most accurate biometric parameter for pregnancy dating and the margin of error is only 3 days, plus or minus 3 days. The crumb rump length measured between 10 to 14 weeks is still very reliable. The margin now is plus or minus 5 days. After 14 weeks, we can revert to the BPD, the biperiatal diameter, when the variation, the margin of error is plus or minus seven days. Here's a picture of the biperiatal diameter, the BPD. Um, this is a cross section through the skull, through the thalamus to be very precise, and this is the parietal bone on one side, this is the other side, and you see here the caliper measuring the biparietal, biparietal diameter, which is here 3.9 centimeters, which is consistent with a gestational age of 18 weeks. So if a lady presents late, no, the LMP is not known, or very irregular cycle, this is uh, the, the most reliable to use after 14 weeks, after 14 and before 20 weeks. In daily practice, um, when you do an antenatal clinic or a woman presents to the women's assessment unit, you ask yourself, how many weeks is the gestational age today? We can use the pregnancy wheel and after adjusting the wheel, the error of the wheel to the expected date of delivery, we can find out, for instance, here on this segment of the pregnancy wheel, if today would be the 21st of October, that is that corresponds with exactly 29 weeks. Or we can use the x-axis, the horizontal axis, if your hospital would use the customized fundal height chart. Here is an example of the customized growth chart, where on the left hand side we see the fundal height, on the right hand side we can see the estimated fetal weight, and on the horizontal axis, here are the dates depicted, and here is the gestational age. So the customized growth chart enables us to calculate the date by just looking. We don't have to use the wheel anymore, which is quite handy. For instance, on the 23rd of March, this lady is 35 weeks plus 6 days. Here we see the expected date of delivery depicted. So two way, ways to do it, um, one can use the wheel, one can use an app or an electronic source or the customer's chart which is present in the uh, South Australian handheld record. Conclusion. The one million dollar questions are 1. Do we know the date of the last menstrual period, the first day of the LMP? 2. Is the menstrual cycle regular? And three, what is the length of the menstrual cycle? If the LMP is known and the menstrual cycle is regular and the length is 28 days, we can use without any adjustment either Nagler's rule, good and old Nagler's rule still applicable nowadays, the pregnancy wheel or an electronic EDD calculator. If the LMP is unknown, and or there is an irregular menstrual cycle, we will request an ultrasound scan to find out what the gestational age is and hence calculate the EDD. We adjust the expected date of delivery if the ultrasound scan measurements, especially the crown rump length, are out by more than seven days. If less than seven days, we will accept it in general. That's the rule of thumb we use here in South Australia.
this was um, this is the end of the Daroga lecture on early pregnancy. I hope and expect that you now understand how to calculate the expected date of delivery. A very important um, to have this knowledge for your exams and more importantly for your daily practice antenatally. Thank you.